Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I've got a two for one for you. I'm going to use one homemade stencil to create two cards. So I've got a piece of mixed media paper on my grip mat and I've cut a stencil out of smooth white cardstock with one of my cutting dies and I'm using this as a mask stroke stencil to add some Catherine Pooler inks onto my mixed media paper. I always use mixed media paper for the Catherine Pooler inks because I find they blend really well on mixed media paper. In the first clip I put down some ink through my mask onto my paper but I wasn't actually happy with the way it turned out because I hadn't anchored my mask stroke stencil down and it shifted so it made a bit of a mess. So I'm doing that again but I wanted you to see it without any ink on at the start just so that everything made sense. I hope that does make sense and I haven't made it worse. Anyway so here we are adding some inks through my stencil stroke mask onto another piece of mixed media paper this time anchored down with washi tape to stop it shifting. And I've chosen three colours that work nicely together. I think it's Be Mind, Cummerbund and Tiara. And these are all from the Catherine Pooler Party Collection. And where I blend each colour, you should get a secondary colour forming. So the pink and blue will make a purplish colour and the blue and orangey yellow will make a green colour. So here's the reveal, the bit where you get to see the pattern and I'm really happy with that. Because I anchored down the mask with some washi tape, it didn't shift. So I didn't want the whole piece, I wanted just a square of it. So I cut a square using my square die and then I added this to a slightly bigger square of smooth white cardstock that I'd cut using the next size up in the square die set. And to help me get everything lined up, I'm using corner positioners and my scoreboard. My card blank is a five and a half by five and a half inch smooth white cardstock card blank. And I added my colored panel with its white mat in the top left corner of my card. I could have stuck it in the middle, but I felt I wanted to offset it just for a bit of interest. Next I took my three inks again and blended them onto some mixed media paper and I went for a really intense colour because I want the die cuts to really pop against that more muted subtle background. So once those were ready, I cut three candles, three different candles, one each from each colour. I then coloured the wick with a black pen and then I heat embossed the flames with some gold embossing powder. And all I did was press the flame down onto my embossing ink pad, dip it in gold embossing powder and then brush off any stray bits of powder before heating it to melt the embossing powder and bring out that lovely gold. And so now I've got some complete candles. If you don't have any candle dies, then I do have a video in which I make candles without candle dies, and I'll leave a link to that above in the eye and down in the video description if you're interested. I did want to give the candles a bit of dimension and because they have patterns die cut into them I couldn't put foam tape behind them otherwise you'd have seen it through the holes in the candles so I just cut some extra candles from smooth white cardstock and glued them on the back so they're only two die cuts deep these candles. 
I then arranged them on my card again off to the left hand side to create some interest everything slightly offset and I added them in a higgledy piggledy fashion I did think about lining them all up along the bottom or adding them in the higgledy piggledy fashion and chopping off the bottoms of the candles but I like the way that they're not quite lined up they've got that bouncy feel to them that brings in some energy for my sentiment I stamped make a wish in black ink on a piece of smooth white cardstock and then die cut it out with its coordinating die but I didn't feel it had enough punch because the stamp was an outline stamp so to give it a bit more emphasis i just filled in the outline with a black pen and that worked really well to bring in a bit of extra dimension i added my sentiment with foam tape and then brought in some white nouveau drops and dusted those around for a bit of gloss and again dimension and energy and that is this card finished For my second card, I decided to use my square die again to cut down the stencil mask that I'd used to blend the ink through. There's no point in throwing this away. It's got lovely, bright, vibrant colours on it from the ink and it can be used on a card. So this is your two for one. I used one DIY stencil and got two cards out of it. After I'd cut my stencil down to a square shape, I added some high tack glue onto the back using a sponge dauber and then added it onto a square of smooth white cardstock again. And I constructed the card itself in much the same way. This time I centralized everything and instead of using colored candles, I cut my candles from gold foil cardstock because I think they stand out really well against that brighter stenciled background. So in the second card, I've got a bit more texture because I've added the actual physical stencil rather than the one dimensional stenciling. And that's it, that's these two cards finished. I hope you like the video and it's given you some ideas of maybe a stencil type die that you can use that you've already got in your stash. If you create a card using these techniques, then do come along to my Facebook group and share some photos because we'd all love to see them. Right, that'll do from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.